Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you again on a Twinkle Tips Friday. I hope everybody is having a great week and you're ready for a great weekend. If you haven't been paying attention, we've been doing some great webinars. You need to log in and join us this coming Tuesday. We're going to have a special guest with us again. Mr. David Peace is going to go through some FPP stuff and big buttons. That's right. That's coming up. But not today. We're going to do something a little bit different. Um, let's get right to it, right? So before we get started with this lesson today, I have an addendum to last week's video. Now, if you look over here, you're going to see a video that I posted last uh, last week. This is our Twinkle Tip Friday video from last week. It was on the new package sequence that is in X Lights, which I think, I personally think, is a great thing. It's a great thing for new people. And uh, let me quickly say that um, that there there are going to be some frustrations anytime you start something new, especially in X Lights. But this doesn't really affect the usage of X Lights. It it doesn't affect really much of anything unless you uh, are in the older version and you're not used to seeing that file. The files can change. You can manually change that. That's what the video I posted last week was about. Um, and also navigating it, and how you can open it. So I, I don't want to rehash it, but I want to say that. The, as always, anytime you add something into X Lights, anytime you add something in, there things can happen where it, uh, where where the users find some bugs, and it's very clear that when you add something that uh, like that, things can be found by different users due to different reasons. So th there are two fixes. This is the most. This is the X Lights. Uh, uh, download page and I, I I was reading releases now I haven't downloaded this yet I haven't started using it it just came out uh, what two or three days ago for me and uh, or four days maybe but um, but there has been some updates to this package sequence you see there's going to be an enhancement here that Keith put in new XSQZ icon so don't worry about the, if you look at the old video last week's video you're going to see a, a different icon that looked like a sequence icon. Now they're updating that so it's not going to look the same so that it's much easier to tell the difference between them. And then the other thing too is it looked like that there was uh, with the sequence package in subfolders it wasn't loading correctly into the XSQZ file. So again these things evolve. Things are going to and, and we're not doing any major I mean this is this is a nice change in my opinion especially if you're new but by all means don't overthink it's just a new file extension and it's one way to keep files sorted and organized just a little bit easier inside the X Lights housing, if you will. So with that out of the way, uh, I want to get to today's lesson, which is it deals with another video that we put out um, a couple months ago. I figured I'd let the dust settle on that video because for uh, one reason or another, it absolutely upset a number of people to sit there and say that, hey, you cannot put groups inside groups uh, and sequence on them. Well, and in that video I went through, I kind of called it the myth buster uh, of, of videos, uh, but I, I, my goal was to show that you absolutely can. But today, I want to show why it's absolutely important that you pay attention when you do. Because today we're going to use some basic effects that I've, I've pulled from one of my sequences and they deal with submodel groupings only because it, illust it will help illustrate what X Lights does whenever it renders an effect. And the, the other thing too, whenever you see the output of X Lights, the final rendering, the final view of whatever it is that you're sequencing, your output may be different because you might be doing this so it's important that if you do map sequences that you open up there the the downloaded sequence and see how they packaged everything how they set their groups up for example uh, if you look at if you look at our groups we put all the arches in an arch group they're just individual models you can see that here we go and if we go over to the candy canes the candy canes are in a group but when we get down to things like oh here's some ppd wreath group 
uh, models. So there's the center rings, there's the diamond arms. We put them all the, we put those submodels, that group of submodels in there, or not that group, but the individual submodel for those, those are all individually in there into a group. This is a submodel because it's orange. Uh, here's the the wreath petals. That's a submodel. But this is a stack submodel, and that's another another story. The the reason why I'm showing you this is because what we've seen happen, and I'm not going to call out anybody, and it's not a terrible thing to do this, but if you are doing this, know that you could be causing yourself a little bit more time and frustration trying to figure out why your sequence doesn't look exactly like the final presentation of the sequence that you downloaded. So with that, what I want to do is I want to share with you some basic sequencing. Okay, nothing crazy here. There's, there's, you got a house preview here. We're only focused on the submodels for the spinners and the snowflakes and the PPD wreath, which you'll see in a moment. So I'm going to do these one at a time because I want you to understand if you're mapping sequences and you decide, oh, there is not enough effects in this group. Uh, and you add more things to the group so that they get more effects on them, that may be a very, very bad uh, idea if you're looking to get the best one for one. And so what I mean is if I go ahead and click on the spinner big arms. So here's the spinner big arms, and then there also happens to be a spinner ring going here. So there's a, a white ring going around the spinner, and then you have the green spinner arms there going in and out and in and out. That's, that's a basic simple effect that anybody can create. The reason why it works is because if we go over here, let's go and look at the, we'll scroll down here, spinners, there's the spinners, and the spinners are all individual models, but if we go down to, up to the uh, spinner, the spinner rings, those are all individual circles, the outer ring of those props. So those are already set up just for the outer rings and their individual submodels. Then we have the uh, spinner big arms and there's those. So the effect is being applied to spinner big arms and the effect is being applied to spinner rings, right? So let's go over and look at that again. And, and now here's the thing. If you say, oh, I really want my snowflakes to also do that, and you decide to go and do this. Let's go back into the layout and let's go up to our snowflake arms. Let's go to snowflake arms. And then let's hold the control key down and let's go to snowflake rings and we right click and create a group. There, we, we've got a test group flakes. And what I want to do is I want to go in back into the sequencer, let's open up display elements and let's go find this new group that I created, which is right here, test group flakes. And I'm gonna put it down here in the spinner area so that we can find it really easy. There we go. So now it's, now it's in our master view, it's underneath of the other ones. And if we come over here and we wanted to see, let's say the spinner big arms, and we wanted to copy that effect, if we mapped it, from spinner big arms to this test group flakes and we pasted this effect. If, imagine this is mapping it to this new group, this group with inside groups, and we paste this in there. Now you're going to see, hey wait, that doesn't look anything like this does. And the reason why, the reason why is because it is being, the effect is being per model default applied to the default of the model. Well, here's the reason why it looks this way. The default of the effect is dual chase, but also it is inside a group that it's applying it to. Well, the default per model, per the model, if we go in and we look at, open up the groups, we have two groups here. We have the snowflake and the snowflake, uh, the snowflake arms and the snowflake rings. Those two groups, those two groups, are being seen as a individual model. In fact, it looks strange compared to just copying this and placing this into the snowflake arm group. And I'll change this to white where you can see it. And there you go. Whoop. You can see that the snowflake arms, it just added it down below, but that's, I, I pasted it up there. But you can see this is what that same effect would look like from here 
from the green here and we changed it to the white now if we now we put this into that group that's that test group right so you're does it work yes yes you can map effects over from anything into a group of props that are inside a group but if the group that uh, you create has groups inside of it the model effects may not convert over the way you think that they should be or would convert because of the way the models are set up if the models are in a group it's being applied as each group is a default model it's a model and so I know that's hard for people to understand let me give you another example of this so I'm gonna scroll over here this is the uh, snowflake arms group and uh, this is a overlay scaled it looks like uh, so you have the, the pinwheel effect with a couple arms on it and a twist going on uh, and then you have a couple shockwaves on all of the snowflakes so in this instance the snowflake arms are not on the smaller snowflakes they're just on the larger one and you can see the output of the shockwave going over the whole group but on the individual high definition models there's a little bit more excitement going on to them what if we wanted to apply those to let's say the snow uh, the spinner big arms and the spinner small arms so if we go over to the layout and we come back to our list here and let's try doing that here is our uh, spinner small arms and I'll control and click on spinner big arms and I right click and create group from selection this is tests group 2 and we'll go back to the sequencer we'll open up display elements we'll scroll down to the group here we just added we'll put it over here test group flakes we'll put it under there test group 2 whatever and we'll see exactly what happens when we place we copy this effect overlay scaled and we place that not on the snowflake arms but onto the test group 2 which is the spinner arms I'll go ahead and paste that over there so here is the difference this is why whenever you go and ask questions inside the groups and somebody has an answer for you whenever you ask the question can I put groups inside groups or why shouldn't I this would be the reason is because unless you know that these render styles are acting upon a group that's inside these two these two groups here it's acting upon them is if they're an individual model we could do this it says overlay scaled what if we did uh, overlaid what if we did per model default here there we go and per the model default this is right here if I were to draw a little square around these four small spinner arms that's the model default that's one model x light says oh that's one model but now if we zoom out and we look at these two spinners here this is the second group and the model default for that effect is going to apply to the group as a whole it won't apply it in exactly the same way now fair enough I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, copy this uh, and let's paste it individually on the groups individually individually and at this point you know what I'll put it over here you might not be able to see it I'll, I'll, I'll go over here where it's a little bit more empty so here's spinner big arms spinner small arms okay so these are per model default and this is the look that it might get actually they were scaled overlay scaled I'll bulk edit them and make them overlay scaled there we go and it's just, it's about the same thing as you can see that is the effect that is going across that matches up to what's going on in these here on these arms and the, the reason why it's different is because the submodels look different they're built differently but they still render the effect over it and give it that smooth look that it has even when you apply it or copy and paste it to a different group but the downside is whenever you individually put those groups into one big group and apply the effect overall you're not going to get the same look it's not going to look the same our third example and I'll, I'll go ahead and scroll over here and do this real quick we'll delete that off of there and this is on the PPD read now many of us have numerous high definition props keep in mind that if you see that some of these things 
are going on, let's say here in, in your HD prop, but you'd like to apply them to your groups of submodels that are on your snowflakes or your spinners. What if we were to go back there and let's say grab our snowflake arms and we grab our uh, spinner uh, alert group. There we go. Copy those. We'll, we'll create a group out of a selection and we'll call this test group three. Okay, now we'll go back into the sequencer. We'll go into display elements. We'll scroll down to test and we'll click and drag it over here to the bottom underneath the group two. And what we'll do is we'll copy the PPD pedals. We'll just copy that. that. That's a pretty nifty effect on the pedals. Let's apply that to the test group three and see what happens. So is it working? Well, vertical per model per strand, it appears that it's doing something interesting. So yes, hey, it looks pretty good on the snowflakes. However, it doesn't really look that as good, as good as it does on the spinners. The spinners are way different. They're not doing the same thing. And, and now you can tell kind of, yeah, it does look good, but sometimes it may not. So keep in mind, folks, as you begin creating groups and you're mapping and you feel like, hey, there's not enough effects found on the layout here that I'm mapping in, and I'm, I'm gonna just throw this group into this other group so that it gets those effects. Be careful. This is why some people in the community are very adamant that you shouldn't put groups in groups. Now, unless you know what's going to happen, I know what's mostly going to happen. Sometimes the render styles do some really amazing things whenever you can do certain things like this, especially if the submodels are built a very specific way. However, that may not be the case that you have. And if you want to apply it and get the very best results, it's always best to do it at a singular group level than it is to do it at the multiple group level. Well, that's everything I have for you today, folks. This is Clyde here from Pixel Pro Displays. We hope you like this video. If you did, please give us a huge thumbs up. It really helps, and we appreciate it if you also hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss one of our PPD videos as we're putting them out pretty darn frequently. New sequences released just about every week. We've got uh, a ton of things coming out, especially our Tuesdays that I told you about at the very beginning of the video. You need to come and visit us. We're going to have a very special prop coming very soon that is going to be a lot of fun to get put together um, and guys if you appreciate the things that we do here at pixel pro displays consider joining the ppd sequence club we do one amazing sequence each and every month in our triple play selection sometimes there's two sometimes there's three like this month we did three new songs actually we revisited an old song and updated it so um Great things are happening in the PPD Sequence Club. You should totally join. And if you like cool shirts just like these ones here, this is our uh, Titans of Twinkle, and we also have our uh, Pixel Me This t-shirts. If you'd like to pick one of those up, link is in the video description. Thank you guys for watching. It's been great seeing you, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Take care, and goodbye for now. So with that out of the way, let me try that.